Hey guys, it's Fonina. You're watching our in-depth video review of the LG Encore, the GT550. It's available right now through AT&T, sporting a contract price of only $49.99, so it's not going to cost that much. And basically, it has some similarities to the uh, LG View Plus, which was recently launched not too long ago. But this device obviously does not pack a physical keyboard, but it may prove to be a decent touch wound only offering to some people out there. Now the Encore does a great job of presenting itself as a classy device, even though it's constructed primarily of plastic. If you look closer, the, um, the bezel around the handset might make you think it's a metallic finish, but it is indeed plastic. Same thing applies to the rear cover, which might look like a brushed aluminum finish, but again, it is plastic. It makes the handset feel extremely lightweight, though, and it's a very compact compared to other handsets out there. At the same time, it doesn't exude some sort of, a, of, of an inexpensive or cheap device just because it's solidly constructed all around. Now part of the reason why the handset is probably priced a lot less than the View Plus, aside from the fact that it doesn't have a keyboard, is probably that it utilizes a 3-inch resistive touchscreen as opposed to a capacitor one found on the View Plus. It has a resolution of 240 by 400 pixels and support for 262,000 colors. Now with this size screen, they'll still be able to make out the uh, text, uh, so it's pretty detailed. On top of that color, so it might not be the most extravagant or vibrant out there, but it's definitely more than acceptable. Uh, it does suffer from some viewing angles, so you're going to definitely need to shield it away from the sun. Right below it, you have your send end keys, the uh, back and clear key. On the left hand side, you have the, the um, micro USB port, the decently sized uh, volume rocker, pretty good feel to it. On the right side, you have a shutter key and uh, the quick task key. They're a little bit harder to press and smaller. Same thing applies to the dedicated power button on top, a little bit harder to make out. The 3.5mm headset jack. Well, on the back, you have a 3 megapixel camera, it's not an autofocus. When you remove the back cover, it gives you access to the micro SD card slot, the battery, and the SIM card slot. Now, for anyone who's used the LG View from a few years ago, you're probably going to be a little bit horrified to find almost a similar interface on the Encore. Now, the home screen is broken up to three different panels, and it's similar to what's offered on the View Plus. The leftmost side, you have here for the contacts. The middle one here is just for your widgets, and you can view all of them up and down. And, of course, the most right-hand most uh, panel is one for your shortcuts. And top here is almost like a window. You could get some additional quick access uh, functions. When you get to the main menu, though, it's laid out in exactly the same fashion as the view so it's kind of makes you wonder why LG or even AT&T decided to go with this although it is pretty functional and gets the job done it would have been just nice to see a slightly new uh, facelift for the uh, platform since this is only a touchscreen device, you're going to have to rely on the on-screen keyboards to get the job done. Now the one we have here is just the normal keypad, and you could enable T9 to get a faster method of inputting text. But obviously the best and fastest way to input text is by using the full keyboard. Um, it is a little bit cramped, but over time you kind of get used to it, and it's fairly responsive. Not the fastest out there, but it'll get the job done. Just like other feature phones on AT&T's lineup, the Encore utilizes the Opera Mini browser, which does a decent job in uh, rendering the page here. As you can tell, the overview, it's a little bit hard to make out the, uh, the uh, text, but if you zoom in, the handset automatically will uh, readjust the text to fit the length of the uh, display, so it makes it a lot easier to read. Scrolling, though, it lacks kinetic scrolling, so you've got to really push it. It might not the, the, be the most smooth experience, but it should be more than uh, usable for anyone out there. For anyone there into social networking, the handset comes with AT&T social net, so it'll aggregate a bunch of different social networking accounts from Twitter, Facebook, and even MySpace, so you have a centralized area for all your social networking needs. On top of that, if you're into just uh, instant messaging people, you'll have your usual clients for AIM, Windows Live Messenger, and even Yahoo. The music player on the Encore is pretty much what you expect. It's going to show you the album cover, the artist information, and even some on-screen controls. We like the fact that it presents you with various uh, pre equalizer presets, so you can better fine-tune the song you're playing. As far as the quality with the speakerphone, it is pretty manageable. Uh, it didn't strain at the loudest volume, and does have a little bit of a sharpness to it. Unfortunately, though, the video watching experience on the Encore is pretty pretty bad, to tell you the truth. And as you can tell from the video, it's pretty choppy. The video that we're playing here is encoded in MPEG-4, 320 by 240 resolution, and just struggles to actually keep up with the video, um, especially when it's just such a low resolution. As we mentioned earlier, the LG Encore packs a 3 megapixel camera, which isn't an autofocus one, so it's not going to produce the sharpest images out there. But we're really surprised by its outdoor performance. Uh, it had a decent amount of detail, and color, although colors did look some a little bit on the darker side. Indoors, though, uh, it had a blue tinge as far as color tones, and detail took a little bit of a drop. 
The Encore has the ability to shoot QVJ video, so that's 320 by 240 at a rate of uh, only 11 frames per second. So honestly, um, it's going to be a little bit on the choppy side. It might not produce the best details out there. Um, on top of that, uh, voices did sound screechy from what was recorded. Calling quality on the Encore could have been a little bit better, but it doesn't really take away from its functionality. Now, the earpiece itself has some strong tones, so you could hear our callers very easily, but there, there is a definite noticeable uh, static sound in the background. On top of that, voices did sound a little bit muffled. On our callers, end, they said that our voices did sound pretty natural. When we switched to using the uh, speakerphone, though, on the phone, um, it did sound also muffled, um, and it's kind of a little bit muted as far as volume. Battery life, um, we managed to get a talk time of four hours, where the, ha where the manufacturer has a rate for three so it does a good job in that regard but it still doesn't quite necessarily uh, live up to some other handsets and finally signal strength uh, we didn't have any issues it retained a solid connection to the network and we didn't experience any drop calls during our testing it's not to say that the LG Encore isn't a bad handset, especially at $49.99, it definitely is quite manageable versus the LG View Plus's uh, $149.99 contract price. And at the same time, it does present you the same set of features found in that handset. We definitely like the fact that it has a pretty decent design. It's very likable, compact, and very lightweight. We just wish that the platform was somewhat a little bit updated just because it still uses the same one found with the LG View. Aside from that, it's a fairly well-balanced handset and should accommodate most people out there. So if you'd like to learn more about this handset or for all the latest cell phone reviews, news, specs, and information, you can check us out at phonelina.com.